Hi, Barney here with uh, an update about what's going to be happening over the next few weeks and over this next uh, term ahead as we uh, go from September uh, right up to Christmas. I hope you've had a good summer. If you were uh, able to make the most of the weather, uh, if you're able to get away, then actually you had a time of refreshing and, and rest uh, and are feeling ready for the challenges ahead. As I prayed a few months ago uh, about uh, this next season in our church life together, this next year ahead of us, uh, the word that came to me, I think, from the Lord was the word underpinning. Underpinning is when you strengthen and you renew foundations. And I feel that God is calling us this next year to do exactly that, to return to those foundations, to make sure that they are strong and renewed and that we are confident in them for the work that he has for us ahead. As we emerge and continue to emerge from the pandemic, I know that there is a lot of tiredness and weariness around. It's not just uh, in church life, it's in all aspects of life. People have been commenting that people are just tired uh, and weary, that we've been holding a lot of anxiety and worry during this time. And that is tiring and wears us down. And sometimes we can think that church is another demand on us, another thing that will take away our energy, that will take, make demands of us. But actually church is one of the great resources that God has given to us to help us through life, to keep us going through life, to build resilience in us for this life and for the call that he has for us. Church is central to God's plan for us it is central to his provision for us it is central to his love for us and so we should be making it a priority in our lives so that we might receive that renewal and that refreshing and that equipping and that sustaining that comes through church when life is hard that is when we need the presence of god most in our lives that's when we need it at its most intense and of course the presence of god is always with us through the holy spirit but there's a unique weight to the, his presence. When we're gathered together, Jesus says that when two or three are gathered in his name, he is there with us. And so church, that gathering of God's people that he uniquely blesses is a great resource for us in our tiredness, in our weariness, in our anxieties, so that we might face life together. So as we enter this new year of church life, we might be feeling, well, actually, I'm tired. I'm, I'm a bit weary. Can I really raise myself up? For this well we can trust that God wants us to be here he wants us to be gathered together and therefore he will sustain us and give us the energy we need for that and what and for all that he calls us to uh, in mission both in the church and through the church and in those workplaces and different environments that he's called us to so as we enter this new church year a year of underpinning let's make the most of this great resource that God has given to the church family that resource of each other the body of Christ to support each other and encourage each other and to help each other and to urge each other on to pursue God and to enter into his presence so on that theme of underpinning we are if you like going back to basics with some of our preaching program where better place to go for that foundational stuff than to the words of Jesus so in the morning we'll be looking at what Jesus says about different things different aspects of life and different aspects of discipleship and we'll be allowing those words i hope to speak into our lives to make sure that our foundations are set on his words that solid rock so that we might face the storms coming up so this sunday i'm going to be starting with looking at the what jesus says to those who follow him what does he say to those who he calls as his disciples in the evening service we're going to be doing something slightly different we're not just having one sermon series running throughout the term but we're actually going to have a, a few littler ones smaller ones looking at different topics so they might be three weeks long or five weeks long or a couple even a couple of weeks long and the idea behind that is that actually we cover a good uh, breadth of things during one term uh, to help us in our discipleship to lay those foundations and so again we're going to fundamental stuff uh, these first three weeks for this uh, little mini series that we're starting on Sunday, looking at God Himself and the three persons of the Trinity. And so this Sunday, again, I'll be preaching this e Sunday evening on God the Father. 
Our hope with the evening service is really that not only does it serve those for whom it is their weekly congregation, but it is also a place where others can come who maybe are committed to the morning service, but can come uh, to the evening service uh, and use it as a resource for equipping, for teaching. It's also just a wonderful space to enter into the presence of God. We hope, of course, that's happening in the morning, but uh, I think the evening just gives us a bit more space to do that. And so I do urge you to use that resource. I was reminded just recently reading an article about the Sabbath and the importance of Sabbath and the importance of gathering together and setting that day aside to the Lord. That we often think of the Sabbath as the six days and then plus one coming at the end. But the church, the early church, changed that because they felt that actually with the resurrection of Jesus on that Sunday, first Easter Sunday, it changed everything that actually the Sabbath comes first and out of it comes everything else. The gathering comes first and the uh, gathering of God's people to be equipped and to be empowered comes first to set everything in straight. So it's not six plus one, it's one plus six. And I think that's really helpful for us in our attitudes to church. Church isn't that extra thing asking more of us, but actually it is that thing that sets us up that is vital that it begins uh, uh, the week for us. I remember John reading about John Wesley, who said he has got such a busy day ahead of him the next day, which means he'll have to get up even earlier to pray even longer so that God might sustain him. We might think of that in that tiredness, oh no. But actually, as we commit and gather in God's presence together, we will be renewed, we will be refreshed, we'll be able to face what's ahead and so the evening service if you don't haven't been along maybe just dip your toe in there it's something to just be refreshed in resourced in it might be that one of the little sermon series is something that really grabs you and think actually I want to find out more about that and so come along for the three weeks of that sermon series to be equipped in that way we're also uh, having our encounter evenings. We've been having those once a term, a time of uh, focusing on prayer, but actually we're shifting those slightly and we're gonna be calling them encounter in the upper room to mirror uh, the encounter the disciples had on that first day. We're gonna be actually meeting in our, in our upper room, uh, but it'll be a chance just to seek God in worship and to uh, seek his presence with us in ministry uh, as well. We're not neglecting prayer. We were we got plans as well to root prayer as foundational in our church life uh, as well. And I'll be giving more details of that in the next few days and weeks. But Encounter, do come along this first Tuesday uh, because uh, that is when we're having our first one this term. Uh, just an opportunity to seek God in his presence. A few other things that are happening as well. Do be praying about Alpha. I know that we uh, say this every every uh, term but it is such a such a great opportunity to invite people along and be bold with it maybe people you've invited in the past who've said no well they'll actually be open to re receiving that invitation now it is a great tool and the holy spirit really uses it to bring people to the faith in lord jesus so do be praying about who you might bring along to that and also one other thing to flag on the 18th of october in the evening service we're going to be having a confirmation service we haven't had one of those for a little while, uh, but uh, Bishop Rose will be coming uh, to lead that service and to confirm those people who feel that they want to make that public declaration of faith. Confirmation is there, if you like, for people who uh, were baptised as children, usually. Uh, and those promises of baptism were made on their behalf to bring them up within the covenant of God's people. And at some certain point, confirmation gives them that opportunity to say, actually, these promises weren't just said on my behalf. They're now promises that I say for myself and to take on and to confirm those promises and to, uh, uh, to acknowledge that before people. So often it is something that uh, people want to do in their teenage years, but actually it's open to anyone to make that public declaration. And so whether you're in your teenage years or whether you're in your 80s uh, or anything in between, actually this might be something that you want to do to confirm your faith publicly, to say actually these promises that were made on my behalf to bring me up within the covenant of God's people are promises that I believe 
the promises that I hold to and the promises that I want to renew and confirm. So do speak to me or to another member of clergy about confirmation. We will be having uh, two, maybe three sort of preparation sessions for that. So you won't be just thrown into that. You'll be able to find out uh, a bit more about that and really uh, think, is this for me before uh, that serves itself? But otherwise, do uh, come along this Sunday. If you're not able to make this first Sunday of the term, then do make sure uh, you come along. We know that some people are still uh, joining us online and it's great to be uh, able to continue to provide that for you. Uh, if you are able to be with us in person, though, do come along. There's something so special about the gathered people uh, of God. And I'm really excited about what the, God, what the Lord has for us over this next season. We know we're coming out of one crisis and potentially heading into another one, uh, even more troublesome, potentially. But actually, we also know that we have a God who provides, who is with us, who never leaves us or forsakes us. And he has given us that precious resource of placing us within a family, his family, to support us, to sustain us, to give us everything that we need for doing his will. And so join us on Sundays. Uh, back in the building uh, together as the family of God so that we might worship him and give him glory and receive all that he has for us. So bless you. Uh, look forward to catching up with you on Sunday, uh, seeing good suntans if uh, people have had that, hearing uh, stories of holidays and also getting excited about all that God has for us. So bless you uh, and I'll see you on Sunday.